Most scientists agree that nanotechnology is going to be our next big technological step forward. For NASA, nanotechnology will mean a giant leap outward. We're looking at nanotechnology as ways that we can uh, develop new materials, new sensors, uh, things that will uh, give us a tremendous uh, jump in return on our science missions. What is nanotechnology? Nanotechnology is about creation of uh, useful or functional materials, structures, devices in the nanometer lung scale. Thousands of times smaller than the average human hair. By controlling and, and you know, fa fabricating devices with perfect atomic structures, you get things like incredible strength and incredible electrical conductivity, or incredible strength and a super you know, heat conductor, or maybe it's an optical conductor and it's you know, a really good thermal conductor. These, these things are not usually mutually compatible, but on the nanoscale, they are. A basic nanotechnology structure is the carbon nanotube. It's a graphite sheet, one atomic layer thick of carbon, wrapped on itself into a tube. It's, it's extraordinarily long and thin, but very, very strong. Researchers at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center have developed an innovative method for manufacturing carbon nanotubes, which typically are made using a metal catalyst. After they are made, you need to boil them in acid for 48 hours to clean them, get rid of your, of your catalyst, and that it increases their cost. In our case, we don't need the metal catalyst. You have an anode and a cathode. The anode is made out of a carbon rod. The cathode is made out of graphite. You're putting the rod really close to the surface of the cathode. You apply a current and it starts burning up the anode. And that's that suit that deposits on the cathode, that's where the carbon nanotubes are. This new method might have major implications for the future of nanotechnology. We're getting higher yields. We avoid damage of the nanotubes. And the cost is much lower. Real clean, single wall carbon nanotubes, they may cost you $500 a gram. And we can make them for approximately $10 a gram. NASA is also looking at using carbon nanotubes to make novel materials with ideal properties. We expect that the electrical conductivity will be uh, better than copper. We expect the uh, thermal properties to be as good as diamond. And we expect the mechanical properties to be as good as steel. Now, the great thing is, is that this nanocomposite material will be very light. These unique properties provided by carbon nanotubes are widely applicable to NASA space work. We are looking at carbon nanotubes uh, for a number of applications like um, chemical sensors, biosensors, making future electronic devices and circuits and architectures. Uh, we are also looking at carbon nanotubes for advanced life support. Collaboration is key to achieving NASA's goals. I think collaboration is critical because um, a lot of people have some very creative ideas. Different people have different resources also. Uh, nobody's got enough to do everything. We need to gel our resources and, and find out the best pieces and, and move those pieces forward. Some of this collaboration is taking place within NASA. NASA's newest focus on technology transfer is to find uses of technology development within the agency. We've been working with some of the other NASA centers, such as the Ames Research Center. We have a very wide portfolio of activities uh, in nanotechnology. The nanotechnology work at NASA Ames uh, composed of both experimental and computational work. We are having about uh, 60 scientists coming from different backgrounds we all working together try to solve the challenges for nanoscience and the nanotechnology. The research centers give us all the pieces of the puzzle that, that we get to put together as a flight center. And we take those pieces and we're able to put them together into a picture that is of interest and value to the scientists we, uh, we support. It is important for us to work with uh, mission centers like you know, Goddard because they can take whatever we do and then they can actually convert them into a deployable technology. This can only happen with the partnership between a research center and a mission center.
NASA is also teaming up with the private, academic, and government sectors. Uh, we're looking to see who else is out there developing nanotechnologies that we could partner with and perhaps spin that opportunity back into the NASA mission. Our missions in general are characterized by their complexity. It's generally not possible for getting everything needed for that mission within the NASA centers. We're working with the John Hopkins uh, University Applied Physics Lab, and then there's uh, also uh, an Army Research Lab, uh, uh, which are also very physically close to us, and that facilitates the ability to, to share equipment and to share research. By broadening our scopes, we get access to top graduate students, faculty at, at uh, universities. We get exposed to a lot of the issues within the commercial sector, uh, a lot of startup companies. And NASA is part of the Nanotech Alliance. The Nanotechnology Alliance um, is a partnership of nonprofit organizations in the greater Washington area, federal laboratories, um, academic institutions, and, uh, and some private nonprofit organizations as well. The charter is to you know, facilitate resource exchange in the areas of nanotechnology application development. Collaboration not only advances basic research by combining resources, but it also greatly contributes to technology transfer. Technology transfer is very important to NASA. Nanotechnology is something we feel very strongly about. So we're quite eager to explore partnerships and have folks come to us to uh, work with our, uh, our people. You know, come in, you can come in and work in our laboratories and we'll work out arrangements so that we can have a, a technology and partnerships uh, that work in the best interests of everyone. And the potential for nanotechnology inside and outside NASA is enormous, from computers and electronics to health care. Anything we do for NASA mission needs always has a you know, benefit you know, to the society and nano is not going to be any different. Nanotechnology is everywhere and everything. It is physics, it is chemistry, it is mathematics, it is engineering. So Jeanette's work has application in localized cancer treatment. We can now make a, a dramatically enhanced uh, magnetic resonance imager, MRI. Or imagine that your car is now consuming one-tenth of the gasoline because one-tenth is heavy, but it you know, is four or five times as strong or has features that you never thought were possible, like reshaping itself, expanding for soccer practice, contracting for a fast trip down the coast. I mean, this is uh, of ubiquitous uh, importance. But these advances can only be achieved by working together. We're looking forward to, to working uh, in partnership, to uh, sh sharing our technology, transferring it out, and then having it uh, transferred in so that we can serve the American public well.